with a design team of a combination of people that I've worked with many times and one person with whom I had never worked and another with whom I've worked a couple of times but not uh, as often as, for example, Todd Barton and I have done, I can't even count the number of shows that we've done together. Uh, Todd uh, is one of the most brilliant musicians I've ever known and I just trust him completely and we have a wonderful rapport, I think. And Deb Dryden, we have done countless numbers of shows and I happen to think she's the greatest costume designer in America. I mean, it's that simple to me. So I feel very lucky that she's here and that I get to work with her um, uh, on Seagull. I trust her taste. You know, we work together, but I trust her taste because it always starts, it starts with us discussing the play. That's what the process is like. The design team and the director come together and the, we talk about the themes of the play and how we perceive the play and images that might be sparked for us. And then with costume design, usually what happens is that the costume designer and I will go through books and say, oh, isn't that great? Wouldn't that be an interesting idea for so-and-so? And the designer then culls together those ideas, plus many more that, in this case, a she, Deb, um, has found and brings these images back to me, the director, and we start to really refine, that's what Trigorin is looking like, that's what, you know. Um, and so you count on the taste of the designer uh, to gather all the other imagery and also, of course, Deb's sense of color and her sense of um, texture is so refined. Um, and she always cares about the play first. She, did, she, did, she never cares about her, her costume standing out. In fact, she prefers people to talk about the play when they like it, rather than saying, oh, and the costumes were wonderful. Of course, I'm sure she's happy to know that, but she doesn't want it to stand out. She wants it to be a natural part of it. We are keeping the costumes in the, in the world of Chekhov. Not necessarily, actually, uh, Siegel was written in 1895, um, but we're giving that some breath. Uh, I would say we're going anywhere from 18, early 1890s to 1910, 12. You know, we're giving it some, uh, and if you think about what that means today, uh, 20 years ago, we looked very different than the way we look now. So that's, that's actually a, a big span and it gives us, it gives us uh, more choice. And you want the characters to look right. It isn't the period that is as important, but we are keeping it in the Chekhovian time. Um, and I have just begun to work with Christopher Acebo for the first time. And in fact, we had a meeting uh, just yesterday and I think, I hope he felt that way, that we had a wonderful time together. We had had uh, a couple, uh, in fact, three design sessions before that, um, discussing um, one I had alone with Christopher, and then I had two with the whole team. And um, this time was a session alone with Christopher, and he came in with a uh, what's called a white model, which is an unadorned shape of what the stage might look like. And he also had, uh, uh, we had picked some imagery that both of us, he and I both shared as being so right for the play. And so he had some uh, uh, um, something to lay over the white um, model for color and possible texture. And what I can tell you is that, which is what I kind of always do with Chekhov, although this design is very much Christopher, um, I put it in a symbolic environment, an emotional environment, not a literal environment, even though the clothes are literal. 
uh, because I'm interested in making an emotional statement about the play through the environment that they're in. And we, we were very moved by a contemporary artist by the name of Rachel White Reed. Uh, I had never seen her work before, uh, and I um, and Christopher brought it and shared it, and all of us at that meeting went, "Wow, there's something about this work that really is exciting." So I'll leave that name for people to Google her and 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 find out what her work looks like. But it, it's not that you ever want when you're using an artist, and I've always based all these emotional environments for Chekhov and Shakespeare plays, particularly on artists that, that designers and I will come up with. Um, uh, but it's not that you're specifically doing a Rachel White Reed environment, it's just that her work inspires some ideas. So it's a highly symbolic environment with um, There'll be some furniture, of course, uh, because they have to sit down and they have to, they have to, um, you know, function. But it'll be minimal. It won't be. I I think some of the mistakes of of early producing of Chekhov and why people kind of bogged down with it. My opinion is that the environments were too realistic, and the plays are much more poetic than that. They are lifted, uh, even though they are supreme studies of human nature. They they have a poetic and lyric um, tone to them and rhythm to them, and so for me the environment needs to express that. I've always been attracted to Claude Monet's paintings in conjunction with with Chekhov, particularly. I feel as if that's a match between two artists, and they actually both lived and worked within the same period. Of course, Monet was uh, m much older. Chekhov died when he was 44 years old. Um, Monet died when he was a very old man in, in about the early 20s, I think, uh, 1920s. So Monet preceded Chekhov in, um, in when he was born, and and went way after Chekhov's death. Te Chekhov died um, in 1904. Anyway, um, Monet was always right for me with Chekhov's work, but what I love in working with Christopher is that we talked about Monet and we looked at the pictures, but he was able to match that with a contemporary artist uh, so that the Monet is somewhere there, but not, you know. Um, so we're off to a grand start on that. The lighting designer is uh, a man by the name of Don Holder, with whom I have worked, as I said, two times before. He did the lights for Three Sisters for me here at the Shakespeare Festival. I think the year was 2001. And he also did the lights for me when I directed The Tempest at um, Indiana Repertory Theater. That was my final production there, too, as it was here. Um, and Don is a genius. I mean, he's a genius. It's just, uh, that's what he is. And he's, he did the lights for uh, The Lion King, and he's, he went through the whole saga of Spider-Man. So, you know, he's a big Broadway lighting designer, and we were very lucky to get him. Uh, because it's very hard for him to clear his schedule. And when Christopher and I were working, we were both saying, oh, and what Don can do with this surface. You know, you st when you know an artist's work, you can project how it's going to come out because of that artist's uh, um, brilliance and ability you know that you can design something. Christopher can have assurance in designing a surface that will provide Don with a palette, with color and texture.